This is a video I wanted to make for a very long time, months now. Final Fantasy XV is underrated. Not only underrated, but one of the most underrated games I've ever seen. Top three, maybe number one, most un underrated games I've ever seen and most overhated games I've ever seen. Now, little background check before I get into the video. I'm not a big, like I was never big on Final Fantasy. I had the game, I bought the game, I was game sharing the game actually with a friend years ago. I've played it on release, then I dropped it. And four, almost five years later, I picked it back up to test my brand new RTX 3090. And uh, I was absolutely blown away. So I wasn't expecting to finish this game. I just came into it because it was on the game pass. I just got a 3090. I needed games to test my 3090. So I know Final Fantasy, I remember Final Fantasy 15 looking good visually. So I downloaded it and I wasn't ex I wasn't even expecting to play 10 minutes of this game. I just expected it to turn it on and to delete it, turn it off. But no, I finished the entire thing all the way through and I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved every second of this game nearly. And I think it's one of the most underrated. Now, I want to give you all my reasons on why I think this game is extremely underrated. And to do that, I have my two friends, Mr. Energy and Whiskey DH, because they, unlike me, play a lot of MMOs, RPGs, and Final Fantasy. I'm just a newcomer to the Final Fantasy series, and this has set my expectations all the way, you know, to the top. So instead of me just talking, a newcomer to this genre and a newcomer to the Final Fantasy series, I want to bring in guys who are not new to this genre and have really good things to say about it. Also, I'm going to try to stay away from as much spoilers as I can so I want, so you guys can go out and play the games yourself if you haven't already. So I'll only be using like, you know, non-spoiler clips pretty much, clips that's in the trailer and uh gameplay before we start i'd like to give a big thank you to mr energy and whiskey dh for being a part of this collab and go check out their videos because links to their channels will be in the description go subscribe to them they have very good content and yeah guys let's get right into it If you know me, you know I'm a big OST guy. I am huma I'm huge on OST. Uh, soundtrack is uh, ties everything together in my opinion. And I'm happy to say that Final Fantasy 15 is my favorite soundtrack in gaming period. And that is no light thing to say. I It dethroned Halo 2, Halo 3, Red Dead 2. It dethroned all my favorite game soundtracks. Especially in the second half of the game. It dethroned them and threw them away. Because this is a 11 out of 10 perfect soundtrack. It's absolutely perfect in every way it's the best part about the game in my opinion the person behind this soundtrack actually yoko shimomura like she's considered a living legend a living legend working on the soundtrack of this game is a big deal uh for for music she worked on games like kingdom hearts mario uh street fighter she's very well respected in this field the emotion with this music ties the scenes together perfectly when you're in a boss fight the action music is absolutely incredible When you're in an emotional scene, like a lot of emotional scenes, that's when it really shines. When the world falls down around you and hope is lost. When you find yourself alone amid a lightless place. And when you're, when it's everything's calm, when it's a calm scene, you know, you guys are riding in the car or you guys are, you know, just walking around the city or walking around the open road. It is also amazing. This soundtrack is 11 out of 10. It ties everything together. It ties the, the amazing combat plot visuals it, it ties it all together and it's the it's the best part about the game in my opinion it's absolutely incredible to uh, 11 out of 10 yoko shimomura this is her best work in my opinion a top three living legend when it comes to music composure in uh, video games this is her best work and that's a big deal it's a huge deal on top of the amazing ost you have visuals now for visuals i know this is very controversial which it shouldn't be because when this game came out it was truly ahead of its time this game was absolutely ahead of its time in 2016. when it came out on xbox one and ps4 it did not look the greatest the base xbox one and ps4 the originals it did not look the greatest it it had stuttering issues, it had FPS drops, you know, it was a it was a very laggy game. 
and it, it uh, the graphics weren't all there because they did not have hardware to support it like i said even high tier pcs couldn't support it you know even at its best at its peak performance now that we have uh, you know the playstation 5 we have the xbox series x and we have i have i played this on the 3090 we can finally look at this game visually and give it its full review and I have to say this game still in 2021 in my opinion is ahead of its time. It's completely like when I look at this game, you know, I'm playing on a 39. That's basically the best thing you could. I'm, I'm looking at this game in the best possible way you could look through it. So I feel like I'm the, you know, I'm the most qualified to talk about this in a way. When I look at this, you know, graphics are a big thing to me. When I look at this game, I, I compare it to the, a game like the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Final Fantasy 15 in 2016 looks better than Final Fantasy 7 remake that came out in 2020. I do not kid you and it's it's barely even close in some scenes. Final Fantasy 15, a game that's almost 5 years older, completely wipes the floor with Final Fantasy 7 remake. It looks so much better. It's so much visually appealing. This game is if this game came out in 2024, I would I would give it a pass cuz this game is absolutely incredible visually especially on the highest graphics on the best pc you could possibly get i had i i mean i couldn't i was it, was, it looked amazing i was i was jaw dropped from the ost and the visuals just it, it just blew me away for a 2016 game it blew it blows me away for a 20 a game in 2021 to be honest it looks better than most of this hot garbage coming out in 2021 it's crazy i give the visuals for its time the way it's aged i give the visuals a 10 out of 10 ost 11 out of 10 absolutely amazing in those categories final fantasy 15 absolutely just it just it's, it's on another level from any other game since I talked about the OST and visuals so much, I'm going to give the mic over to my friend Whiskey so he can talk about the combat. Since he's, since he's so big on combat, you know, I feel like he's more qualified to talk about this than I am. The most I can say about the combat is it's flashy, it's really good, but I'm going to let him take the combat over for the most part. Alright gamers, let's break it down. The Final Fantasy series started in the 80s on the NES and the Famicom, and it's mostly been some variation of turn-based combat. Think Pokemon. Final Fantasy 4 through 9 used something called the ATB, which was a bar that would tell you what character could attack, but the difference being you could only attack once the bar was full. The Final Fantasy X series went back to turn-based combat, and it wasn't until Final Fantasy 13 that you could actually move around in battle. Similar to the other games, each time you encountered an enemy, it would bring you into the combat area, but this time you could move around and attack as you pleased. Later on, they released Final Fantasy XIV, which is an MMO, and it has MMO-style combat, so if you've played an MMO before, you know what you're into. But now, we get to talk about the focus of this video, which is Final Fantasy XV, which is probably the biggest change in the Final Fantasy formula. You go from this to... Holy shit. This is different. This system is The Witcher 3, but you can teleport, right? For the first time in the series, the open world and the combat are one. There is no transition anymore. You go straight from exploring and running around to fighting monsters. You see some big-ass deer-looking thing off in the distance, and you can go kill it. You want to go fight a big-ass turtle that's actually a mountain? You can go do that, not to mention all the demons that go bump in the night if you stay out too long. And it's great. But the problem is that it's not all the time. The combat is only good sometimes. Now, don't get me wrong, when that sometimes happens, on god this game rules. Now the best part of the combat is this thing called Arminger, which whenever you get it, you have this little bar that goes all the way around your weapon select, and whenever it's full... Oh, that's that good shit! I give you the best part of the combat of this game, the Arminger weapons. You go 200 miles an hour, teleporting to every enemy, hitting them with every single crystal weapon that you have collected thus far in the game, 
and it is the best thing that the combat has to offer. But, as they say, what goes up must come down, and unfortunately, this kind of comes down hard because whenever you're fighting one-on-one -on -one enemies or you're fighting weak enemies the combat is really fun and it's strategic at times whenever there's more than three enemies on the screen the combat doesn't really work and i know that sounds weird because when you think about it square enix has put out how many games with combat like this look at the kingdom hearts series they can manage it like that well the difference being kingdom hearts is really floaty and you're meant to stay in the air for a long time. Even in the first one, you can stay in the air for quite a long time if you know what you're doing and if you have the right abilities equipped. In Final Fantasy XV, you kind of can't. Your characters have to abide by the laws of physics because this is supposed to be as Earth-like as possible. So that kind of hampers the gameplay. The problem is that whenever you try to get really close to physics in games like these, you run into problems. Look at The Witcher. The Witcher probably has the closest combat system to this. The Witcher is more strategic. You have to decide what signs you're going to use. You're going to use Igni, or you're going to use the hypnotizing one, or you're just going to hit them all with a shockwave to stagger them so that way you can get some hits in and then run away. This is different. You kind of have your weapons that all hit things, and then you have your teleport, and that's about it. And the teleport gimmick can only get you so far. Now, visuals are, of course, a big thing in Final Fantasy, as Fritzbo talked about, and that also applies to the bosses. I mean, look at Sephiroth in Final Fantasy VII. That's an iconic fight right there. And here, in Final Fantasy XV, you feel that they finally get the sense of scale that these bosses deserved. There's one boss fight against a giant sea serpent in a destroyed city, and you use your Arminger weapons the whole time, and it's great, because this massive creature is what you're fighting. The problem is that that's the only boss fight I remember from the game, and I've played it through the whole way, and that's the only fight I remember. The main reason why the bosses aren't really that good in this game is because they're forgettable. But all in all, and with all that being said, if you're a fan of Kingdom Hearts or the Witcher series, with a little bit of adjustment, I think it's safe to say that you'll like the combat in this game just fine. When it comes to Final Fantasy XV, there are a lot of things that I can talk about. There are plenty and plenty of things that I can go over and discuss and etc. But, you know, my friends have already done that, so the, the two things that I really want to talk about the most is the plot and the cast. Be because these, I believe, are the two strongest entities within the game, in my opinion. Yes, the combat did kind of revolutionise the Final Fantasy genre from here on out, I believe anyway. And yes, the OSTs and the visuals and all that are amazing, but the two things that I would really, really like to focus on are like I said, these two things, the plot and the cat. Because I, I think that when it comes to these two things, or these two sort of entities in the game, they work and play off each other hand in hand. Their cast is the plot, and the plot is the cast. This whole story is a story about friendship and loyalty. It's about your bonds. It's about showing who you are as a friend and as a loyal member of just a friendship. And more than that, a indirect family. I know this game gets talked about a lot in a very bad light purely because of how long it made people wait to play the game. Of course, I can completely understand that. The wait was an absolute killer. But to me, one of my favourite things was the plot and just the storyline in general. And, and to be quite honest, I genuinely think that this is one of the best plots in the Final Fantasy series, at least in my opinion anyway. I'm, I'm not going to tolerate any you know, me being attacked for that because it's just my opinion at the end of the day. I am a really, really big fan of medieval fantasy settings, like things like Berserk and stuff like that. The dark fantasy or just the medieval fantasy setting in general is something that I really cannot get enough of in my opinion and Final Fantasy XV is a game that does that storyline justice. It does those tropes and those certain settings perfectly, in my opinion. It's not just a journey about a prince trying to find his loved one, it's not just a journey about the bonds of friendship, it's also a journey about self-discovery. It's a journey about four characters just trying to grow up 
just trying to find themselves in this ginormous game setting, which by the way, the, the world is ginormous, I, I just mentioned that of course. The setting for the game is large, very very large in fact, one of, the, one of the largest the Final Fantasy series has ever seen. But when it comes to this journey of self-discovery and when it comes to this journey of people just trying to find themselves and create bonds, you need a very very strong set of cast members and that is where Final Fantasy XV, in my opinion, definitely does not slack in whatsoever. However, when it comes to the main four, we have Noctis, Gladio, Prompto and Ignis. These are four characters that I never really expected myself to get so emotionally attached to. And of course, yes, Prompto and Gladio and Ignis, they are in their natural core side characters, but the game does not skimp on giving them their main sort of screen time and their own self-discovery stories through paid DLC content. Now, I, I know that may be something that, that can turn people away and that's completely understandable, but there is some really, really good writing in there and there's some really, really good storyline aspects in there that for me was something that I just had to experience. It was something that I did not want to miss out on. And those DLC episodes done all that they needed to do and more to let me know that these characters are just purely tied by the bonds of fate, they're tied by these unbreakable bonds of friendship and this journey of self-discovery is one that I'm so, so glad that I did not miss out on. I think overall the cast and the plot of Final Fantasy XV is something that I find really really hard to complain about purely because I just became so personally attached to the world and to the characters and yes I understand that the game isn't the most popular in the series but I do have to give it its credit at the end of the day and I think a lot of people should as well. I think Final Fantasy XV is definitely a game that carries a lot of emotional weight and just a, a lot of just fine and amazing experiences just littered throughout the entire game that I, th I think that you guys should definitely experience for yourselves at some point if you haven't already. I think Final Fantasy XV is definitely one of my favourites. So yeah guys, that was basically our review or you know, why we think the game was underrated, is underrated, extremely underrated, and one of the most underrated games ever, also overhated. So, although critical of the game, as you should be with all things, we can all agree that this game is extremely great. Everyone should go out and try to play this game. And I'd like to thank Whiskey DH and Mr. Energy again. Go subscribe to their channels, link in the description. They did really good in this video, as you can tell. And yeah, guys, if you liked, like, subscribe, and yeah, that's it.